sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome to the first video of the local ecosystem module. Well, in this video, let's cover the first dot point, which says compare the abiotic characteristics of aquatic and terrestrial environments. So before I start to talk about this dot point in more detail, I'll go over what the aquatic and the terrestrial environments actually are, because you need to know that to be able to answer that dot point, and then I'll go into the dot point itself. So first, what is an environment? Well, environment is all about all your living and your non-living things. So your living and your non-living things make up your environment. So, for example, if we look at a desert, we've got the sun, we've got sand, we've got snakes, we've got frogs, all those things would be the desert environment. So for any given area, we look at living things, non-living things, and that makes up its environment. So in Australia, for example, we have arid environments, which would be your desert. Arid means low rainfall, so this would be a desert. Semi-arid would be a bushland. We've got rainforests in the north of Queensland. We've got shrubland and woodland in the Sydney area. There's lots of different types of environment in one continent itself. And there are different words, there's scientific words for living and non-living. Non-living, the word for that is abiotic. And that's the thing we actually have to compare in this video, and I'll do that very soon. And living, the word for living, is biotic. Remember, biology just means living, so biotic comes from living, and abiotic means anti-biotic, so anti-living, so non-living. And we'll compare both of these throughout the chapter, but for this video we'll be looking at the non-living components that make up the environment. So also there's two different words, there was terrestrial and aquatic. Now terrestrial, this just means land, so land environments environments that we can find on land, and aquatic, obviously that means water, so it has to do with water, and when it comes to the ones we can find on land, we have things like our rainforests and our deserts, now these are very different, so they're very different, but they both make up terrestrial environments. Now still there's quite a few more, still the shrublands, and then there's the estuarine environments, which are mangrove areas, swamps and such, so there's a huge variety of terrestrial environments, and same goes for aquatic. So aquatic, we have rivers, which are freshwater, and these are very different. So this is, for example, the Hawkesbury River right here, and they are very different to your marine environments, so your salty environments, like your oceans. So when we think about environments, we should think about what kind of environments, and not all the same, and they all have different types of living and non-living things living in it, and they're both connected as well. And we'll go through that very soon. But yeah, for this, so aquatic means watery environments, terrestrial environments are the land environments, and environment itself is all living and non-living things in that area. So now I'll go over that dot point. So it says compare. So compare the abiotic characteristics. We have to compare the features, the abiotic features, of both terrestrial and aquatic. And that verb is always the most important part when it comes to dot point. The verb says what we need to do. So compare means we need to look at differences, but also at similarities. So how are they different and how are they similar for their aquatic and terrestrial abiotic features? So for example, the when it comes to temperature variations, so you think about where can we find bigger temperature variations, on land or in water? Well, deserts, for example, have zero degrees at night and 40 degrees, up to 40 degrees during the day. So that's a huge variation. Whereas in the ocean, we might have zero degrees, uh, sorry, not zero, maybe say 25 degrees during the day and maybe 20 degrees during night. So that's a change of five degrees as opposed to 40 degrees. So There's going to be much more fluctuations on land. And that makes sense because if you think about it, like if you were to, for example, boil a kettle of water or, or a pot of water, that water is going to take a long time to actually heat up compared to if you just put your hands over the flame. The air itself prevents, doesn't really absorb much heat. As water absorbs lots of heat, it's going to take a lot of time to actually warm up that water. So the sun warms up air much faster than it does the water itself. So you're going to have higher, so terrestrial has higher temperature variations, whereas aquatic has lower. You kind of have relatively stable aquatic temperature, whereas terrestrial can be quite different. In terms of availability of water, obviously it's going to be lower, generally it's going to be lower when it comes to the terrestrial 
compared to aquatic. So aquatic is just the water itself, so fresh water and, and marine water, and it has, has lots of water. So higher for aquatic and lower for terrestrial. But even when it comes to terrestrial, there are differences. So, for example, we have a, a desert. Here we have low, very low amounts of water, whereas something in a rainforest would have still maybe not as much as the water itself, like in the ocean, but would have much more than the actual desert. So overall, it's lower, but then it's still important what kind of environment we look at. And obviously, if you think about the kind of animals we find, they're usually adapted to both in temperature variations and availability of water. You're going to find very different types of animals in a desert compared to a rainforest because it's connected. The abiotic factors determine what kind of animals live there. The availability of gases, overall, we have more availability of oxygen, so more oxygen in terrestrial than aquatic, so less in our aquatic area. And the reason why is because O2, so oxygen, doesn't dissolve that well in water. So it doesn't dissolve that well. Whereas it dissolves, obviously there's no problem when it comes to air itself, it just floats in the air. So it's going to be a bit less oxygen in the water than there is on land, but there's going to be a bit less CO2, carbon dioxide, on land compared to water. So there's more carbon dioxide in the actual ocean than there is floating around on land. Now what does that mean for living things? Well obviously we need to have oxygen to live. So we're going to have, you no know, animals don't have to be adapted to get their oxygen because they're fine. Whereas for the oceans, there's going to be less oxygen and most of the oxygen is going to be on top, so on the surface of the actual area, the water itself. So they're going to try to stay close to the surface to get most of the oxygen. pH, there are big variations. So there's big variations when it comes to pH. And most of that has to do with soil. Now, soil, why is that important? Well, we have stuff growing in soil. Obviously, we have plants and trees growing in soil. And some plants might be the best adapted to pH of 5 or 6. That, that's how acidic it is. Whereas some might be having a best pH of 7 to 8. So the soil pH determines what kind of stuff grows there because if it's not adapted it can't grow there whereas there's pretty low fluctuation there are some fluctuation because carbon dioxide which is quite a bit of it is in water causes lower ph but overall there's lower fluctuations they're usually quite similar in the ocean and fresh water overall compared to your land where we have soils which have very different phs the availability of ions that talks about salts and like. Obviously, we're going to have more, many more ions in our aquatic, especially. I mean, fresh water doesn't have that much, but especially in our marine, because marine is all about salt. So there's lots more ions, especially sodium chloride, in our ocean than there is somewhere else. Whereas terrestrial, we do have our ions in our soils. That's usually where they are. So they're in soils, but they're Less, they're overall they're less compared to your aquatic, especially your marine aquatic. Now light, obviously there's plenty, so there's plenty of light on land. We have no problem with light, especially in like in desert, there's just light everywhere. There, there are some problems with light when it comes to a rainforest. So some of the actual plants have to have adaptions to make sure they get more light because there's so many trees there that they actually block the light. So if they, they have they, they have those climbers, the things that climb the trees to get to light because all plants need light and the way they get that is to actually try to get as high as possible. So there's some problems with light in the rainforest, but no problems in the desert because there's plenty of light. When it comes to aquatic, there is actually, so as the deeper you go, so the deeper you go, the more light disappears, which is why you have that really dark area beneath a couple of meters of, of ocean. So more light disappears the deeper you go. And this is why you have these kind of creatures living in the deep oceans because there's absolutely no light. They have, they're actually blind, you can see they're blind, and they're quite scary as well, I wouldn't want to be close to one of these. But they need to have no light, because there's no light. They have, they're adapted to have no light, because after a couple of meters, the water absorbs light, and light itself is gone. It becomes dark. Whereas there's plenty of light, usually comes terrestrial. Now there's more, much more pressure in the ocean, and again, the deeper you go, the more pressure there is. Because you can imagine all of that water just pressing on you. So the deeper you go, when you, when you swim down, the more pressure it will be because all the water on top of you will press on, down on you. Whereas when it comes to the terrestrial, it's actually the higher you go, the less pressure. The same thing, like there's actually more pressure here, 
like at normal altitude, then it would be on a mountain because you have all those heavy gases, oxygen and the like, they're down where we are, not on a mountain. So there's less pressure on top of a mountain and more pressure here at sea level. But overall, those fluctuations are still smaller when compared to your oceans. So ocean fluctuations could be massive. So if you compare the top of the ocean to the bottom of the ocean, much more pressure on the, on the bottom than on the top. A buoyancy and viscosity. Buoyancy is how well you float. And you can view viscosity as how easy you can move. So floating, um, you can float much better in the ocean. So more buoyancy in the ocean. Less buoyancy on land. And uh, that's obviously a very easy thing you could do is you can just jump in the water and see how well you float. And if you were to jump up in the air and were to try to float, you would um, fail. So don't try that. It's not a, a, a experiment you should try, but it wouldn't work. You can't float in the air itself. Viscosity, again, it's how easy you can move. So you could be, there's no air doesn't really help hinder us from moving much. So there's less viscosity when it comes to air, whereas we have to move for all that water, which is why it can be quite hard to swim. So all that water makes it really hard to move. So there's more viscosity in the ocean than there is on land. So these were some of the abiotic factors when we just compared them. So there was temperature variation, higher temperature variation on land than in aquatic, lower availability of water on land than in aquatic. We've got more O2, so more oxygen on land, but less carbon dioxide on land. The pH variation are very big on land, especially for soil, but there are low fluctuations for the ocean. Ions, we have less ions available for land, but more available in the ocean. Sodium chloride, that's all ions, and that's salt. Salt water has plenty. Light, we've got plenty of light on land, whereas we have very little light on in the ocean, especially the deeper we go, the more less light we have. There's less pressure fluctuations overall on land, but the deeper we go for the ocean, the more pressure there is. So on the bottom of the ocean, it'd be lots of pressure. And buoyancy and viscosity, we have more buoyancy, so how floatability, we have more floatability in, in, in the water, and we have more viscosity as well, so we can, we, it's harder for us to move because all that water blocks our movement. But yeah, I hope that was useful. You need to know the differences between the two, terrestrial and aquatic, and you need to be able to compare the abiotic factors, like I just did as well. Thank you for watching.